Mobile elevating work platforms are heavily used in construction sites, airports, and many other workplaces where the operator has to reach far heights. MEWPs comprise traditionally very long hoses. Those hoses are usually routed throughout the machine structure, which lead to not only expensive operating costs and production costs, but also service costs. Additionally, those machines traditionally leave the operator on its own to maneuver the machine around very challenging areas and usually avoid those objects. Here at Bosch Rexroad, we focus on four focus areas for this application. Focus on the electrification and improvement of efficiency of the system. We focus on increasing the operator awareness and obstacle detection. We focus also on improving the operability of the machine, but also finally on the reduction of the complexity of the system, the weight, and ultimately the costs. We have addressed the state of the art and challenges of this application through the development of a system functional bundle called Decentralized Move Control, or DVC. The system ultimately increases the efficiency of the system, eliminates the complexity of the control elements being in a central fashion. It allows for the operator to have more electronics to its advantage and increase its awareness of the surroundings, but also minimizes the machine weight, energy consumption, and improves the productivity of the machine. Hi, uh, my name is Teo Kim. I'm senior engineer in Bosch Electros. I focus on electrification, electronic control, uh, assistance, and automation functions for MEWPs. For the traditional system, it uh, has a centralized manifold, which has a pair of uh, uh, hydraulic hoses to each actuators. The traditional systems for the simultaneous motion for unevenly loaded actuator, they use hydraulic compensators and multiple pumps to achieve that. And this contributes negatively because adding complexity and adding cost to the system. In our DVC system, uh, we replace those hoses to a pair of central common hydraulic hoses, which interconnect all the actuators and its control elements uh, attached on the actuator. So by doing this, we modify the three uh, actuators to the decentralized system, and the required hydraulic hose lengths uh, reduced 40% uh, compared to the existing machine. The benefit of reducing hose lengths uh, 40% uh, will uh, reduce the system weight and also uh, reduce the complexity of the uh, hydraulic system and it will uh, reduce the cost of the system. Our DBC functional bundle exploits uh, single actuator control uh, using uh, throttleless actuation. This uh, is by uh, controlling either the displacement of a variable pump and uh, electric motor speed. As a consequence, the output flow of the pump is directly controlling the actuator motion. This will translate efficiency increase uh, up to 55%. We did this uh, by electronic flow sharing, uh, which can distribute the flow using proportional valve and IMU sensors, uh, which are attached on the actuator. Proportional valve and IMU sensors will enable additional functionality, such as electronic platform leveling, which can remove the existing hydromechanical leveling system. And the benefit will be uh, reduced weight and the reduced cost. For this kind of simultaneous motion uh, of a pump and the electric motor, uh, we developed advanced control uh, for the pump displacement and electric motor speed. So what we have implemented is we embedded a full efficiency map into the, our uh, Lexros RC controller and to the instantaneous optimization. to find out the most efficient displacement and electric motor speed uh, at the given uh, condition. This will lead to additional efficiency increase up to uh, 10% compared to the non-optimized control. With a smooth operation with uh, our DBC system, we can make a cup of tea with a spoon attached on the platform. My name is Paul Gannett, and I'm a control systems engineer. 
This machine's being controlled with our Bosch Rexroth Bodos series of controllers and sensors, including our MM7 inertial measurement unit and our PR4 pressure sensor. The MM7 inertial measurement unit is used to compute the angle and speed of every joint in the system, which is used to do advanced control techniques. The pressure sensors are also used in the system as feedback for what's going on in the high pressure line. The RC controller reads all the inputs from the operator and the sensors at 100 times per second, does the math to compute the speeds and trajectory of the machine, and then outputs current control outputs to the valve and sends CAN messages to the electric motor controller to control the speed of that motor. Our software is fully customizable. Using model-based design, we were able to plan ahead for many different architectures of system with fewer joints, more joints, rotational or prismatic, and we can customize it for any customer. Our software supports both diesel and electric machines, and we can control our pump in three modes. We can have a fixed displacement mode, a variable displacement mode, or if we have electric motor control also, we can optimize the efficiency by controlling the motor speed and pump displacement simultaneously. To the topic, the right drive characteristics in all situations. Our new answer to the question torque or speed is get what you need, discover what software can do and find it all in one hydraulic solution for all your compact vehicles. Our holistic approach for the pump hardware and control concept enable a simply switch between torque control and speed control. The new unit, a 4BG Series 35, can now be combined with sensors, for example, pressure, speed or angle as a virtual value and the like. The hydraulic functions are now provided via software control. And to make this possible in software, we have optimized the hardware first. It's very simple. You have to know hydraulics to control it in electronics. Let's take a closer look. The first aspect is hysteresis. We have managed to reduce it at the pressure reducing valves and the stroking piston system. Scatering tolerance is now optimized thanks to the pinnet housing to the port plate and distribution plate to the port plate. Optimize swivel out behavior. Thanks to the improved retaining system to enhance the fine controllability in a small command range. Furthermore, improved pump characteristics. Includes the optimization of the stroking piston system, the reversing notches and the timing of the distribution plate. Next, enhanced load capability up to 530 bar. Thanks to the optimized rotary group, port plate and gradle bearing. Last but not least, higher fundamental dynamics. That means hardware is no longer a potential bottleneck for open loop and closed loop control strategies. It's this hardware expertise and know-how that has allowed us to transfer control functions into software. So what's the essence? From a hardware point of view, the pump hardware clearly represents intelligent simplicity. However, you might ask, does the switch towards software really make it smoother for you? Rest assured, the shift is not only from hardware to software. You can now control the functions instead of the complex physics of the hydraulic pump. In addition to our optimized hardware, our Bodas pump driver pushes the performance boundaries even further. How? Model-based control enables self-learning features like compensation of series and aging tolerances. Flatness-based feed-forward control 
enables extremely fast and stable pressure control. The state variable filter enables a seamless meshing of command values and limitations without discontinuity. The trajectory planning method enables maximum pump dynamics but without unintentional overriding and overshoot effects. With the physical interface, you can control the pump without pump knowledge. Last but not least, fast and precise automatic calibration is enabled through the pump knowledge and characteristics. After all, it's the combination of a map-optimized, undamped pump characteristics with smart control algorithms that has allowed us to transfer hydromechanical intelligence into software. How this work in practice? Let me use a system schematic of a simplified machine control. The driver's request is transmitted from the HMI to your functional software. This passes on a request to our Bodas pump driver, which calculates the pump input signal according to the selected characteristics and transmit it back to your functional software. There, it causes exactly the motion of the machine you need. The Bodas pump driver runs on your machine ECU, which can be either a third-party controller or a Bodas controller. The Bodas pump driver provides just the functionalities. You retain absolute control over the overall characteristics and behavior of the machine. On the same piece of hardware, different control concepts with totally different characteristics can be emulated, mainly pressure control and displacement control. The Bodas pump driver also provides a range of comfortable setup functions to save your time and your effort, such as automatic calibration and electronic pressure cutoff. Let's put the different control concepts and characteristics to the test in real life. We are going to see a vehicle demo with uphill movement to represent load changing conditions and the initial vehicle speed is set up to a constant value via a potentiometer. First scenario, automotive load dependent pump control. On level terrain, the vehicle travels at a constant speed. Due to the load increase on the hill, the vehicle speed decreases up to a certain point. A third increase of the load by the step stops the vehicle. The driver must increase the tractive effort by the pedal in order to continue driving. Second scenario, proportional load independent pump control. Again, on the level terrain, the vehicle travels at a constant speed. Despite the load increase on the hill, the vehicle speed remains constant. Even the load increase by the step does not stop the vehicle. So, to come back to the initial question, torque or speed, we have taken the ore out of the equation and thereby enabled a simple switch between the two. With this flexible concept, the benefits scale up to create highly economical and productive value of your mobile machines. In development, with a reduced engineering effort and simplified machine assembly. In logistics, because now there are less pump variants to consider in your supply chain or warehouse with regard to modularity, because one important result of electronic control is the extended applicability of the machine. Plus, you can implement new vehicle features, just for example, torque limitation. And last but not least, inflexibility, because of the variable 
and hardware independent drive characteristics. What's the challenge in your market? We are all set to drive you beyond any challenge. We've designed different modular solutions to improve the energy efficiency of the wheeled excavators and other machines. In our talk today, we will focus on one of the most interesting solutions, the two-loop LUDV. Edwin, I think it's best to start first with today's state of the art, the electronic open loop, a one-loop EOC. For a wheeled excavator today, the EOC components are two CAN joysticks, the CAN foot pedal, an RC controller with EOC software, an A11 pump with EOC controller, the RS flow sharing control block, the GFB gearbox, and of course, last but not least, the A6 VM motor for travel. Let's take a look at a typical load cycle. In the top diagram, you can see the cylinder displacements. Some of you immediately recognize the 90 degree tick and dump cycle. And in the middle diagram, we have the active consumer pressures and the pump pressure in red. These graphs show two typical aspects of an excavator. First, there are a lot of parallel movements. And second, the load pressures are not identical. And in consequence, Edwin, we have throttling losses. So Johannes, let's go two loop for less pressure matching. Edwin, slow. When we separate the machine functions in two loops, we need two full flow pumps because some functions like boom and arm need still the full pump flow. Unfortunately, most machines are power limited. So to prevent the diesel from stalling, the pump swivel angles are constantly reduced during operation. The bigger the pump, the more it has to swivel back. And Edwin, you should know, the smaller the swivel angle, the smaller the efficiency. Johannes, of course. That's why we first separate the loops and then connect them intelligently. By this, we can reduce both pumps 50% in size and with no performance loss. Sounds not bad, but what makes a summation intelligent? As you can see, it's an electrohydraulic actuated spool with integrated pressure compensators. On the one hand, the loops can work separately. Each pump supplies oil to defined functions with no connections between the loops. This leads to improved leveling performance and solves one of the biggest challenges of the wheeled excavator, the crawler tracking performance in small turns. Crawler tracking performance? I guess, Edwin, you mixed up a little bit the types of an excavator. I know, I'm sorry, but I guess you get the point. On the other hand, each pump loop can help out the other and send oil flow to support whatever machine function. For example, if you want to speed up the arm movement. Okay, Edwin, that sounds great as well, but have we tested it and what is the benefit for our customers? Efficiency-wise, in combination with variable inputs, we've proved savings of up to 20%. We measured this value both on a diesel-powered machine and on this battery-driven research excavator that is right behind us. Depending on the machine size and the working task, we assume a return of invest in about a year. So, when we want to keep the excellent multitasking flexibility and performance of that LUDV system, increasing the efficiency by going two loop is a logical step. And for that, we can perfectly use the two loop RS20 flow sharing well. But Edwin, can you give me and our customers some more ideas to improve the efficiency? It's already ongoing. See the machine behind us? When it's lowering its boom, the energy is recovered into the battery. We do this by using the power regenerative boom module and the over-centering capability of the EOC pump. I would love to tell you more on the details or talk about the other modular solutions to reduce CO2 emissions. We have the new electrohydraulic hose burst valve which we use as an independent meter out. Multi-pressure networks and secondary controlled slew motors are a great way to increase the energy efficiency. But let's do that a different time. Edwin, thank you. And for you out there, if you want to learn more about our modular solutions to increase the efficiency of open loop systems and to reduce the CO2 emissions, please get in touch with your local Bosch Rexroth contact. They will happily help you, or if needed, build the bridge to the expert on the topic.